Hello everyone. I noticed that many of you would like to put a pyramid into your pyramid brochure, so I thought I'd take a look at how to do that. I'm going to look at my InDesign, and you'll notice that we've got a very tall skinny panel for our front cover here. So let's find out just what size we should make it by drawing a rectangle over the whole front cover. And it says 20 picas by 48 picas. So if we want to make a pyramid that fills up the entire front cover, when we go to Adobe Illustrator, we'll make a new document, 141006 Pyramid Brochure Front Cover. And we're going to make sure that our units are set to picas and 20 and 48 as the numbers. So that gives us a very tall space that could be kind of difficult to use the perspective grid on, so I've been working on being able to make some adjustments to it. If I drag this in here, it's going to bring the angle of the blue grid in. I can do the same thing for the orange side, and it moves the blue one out a little bit. So this takes a little bit of tweaking to get it to line up just the way you want to take full advantage. Now all my lines are lining up pretty well, and I can adjust the size of the blocks of my pyramid a little bit. I can make them large blocks or small blocks. I'm going to do this about that size. And I'm going to leave myself a little bit of room at the top for a title. So this is almost where I want to be here. Let me just tweak this a little bit more and line things up. So what this perspective grid does is it gives me some guides for my line segments. So I'm going to draw some lines here. I'm going to start with the very top one and come down here and then decide where I'm going to have it go to. Right about there. And it will help me find where those line up with these green guidelines. Okay, so that gets me started. I can turn the grid on and off with Control shift i and see the beginnings of my pyramid there. why all of it's not showing up. There we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for a pyramid we're going to use the horizontal lines as our guide. I'm going to control plus zoom in a little bit so I can work more detailed. And just click and drag my line segments this way. Okay, now my horizontal lines, I don't necessarily want to use the guides here as the exact ones because then the bricks on the corners are going to look kind of funny. So one of the things I can do if I just don't worry about making it look too realistic, make it look more like a geometry uh, textbook illustration, is I can just draw from where these connect and go straight down. Now you'll notice it is possible to draw a line that is not straight down unless you hold down shift and then it will help you make a perfectly straight line. Click, shift and drag. And I, I can easily drop from these corners and they're running parallel to my guidelines but I'm not using the guidelines to make the drawing. I still get that diminishing perspective there though. Now I do notice that I'm making some mistakes. So I'm going to control shift I and zoom in, control plus, and show you how you can adjust things afterwards. I'm going to use my regular selection tool, select the line segment, and move that over. This one wasn't quite long enough. Rest of them don't look too bad. Oh, this one's too short as well. Okay, so let me turn my guide on again. Control minus to zoom out enough to draw from the top to the bottom. So once again, line segment tool, holding down shift so it comes straight down.
Sometimes it's probably easier if I turn it off now. I'll still get the help from the guides. I can see just where I want the lines to begin and end. So there we go, not a realistic looking pyramid, but one that looks pretty cool nonetheless. Now these are line segments and they can be adjusted afterwards so I can fix my errors. Drag that down. And the main question I get now is how do I fill in with color? We're used to a paint bucket tool that'll just fill those in. But in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a triangular shape that's gonna be behind the lines. And we do that by looking at layers. You can see that everything that I've drawn so far is on its own layer one. I'm gonna create another layer right now and go use my polygon tool. There's rectangle, ellipse. If you hold down shift, you get a perfect circle. And here we have the polygon tool. And the polygon tool will actually ask you how many sides do you want your polygon to have, and a triangle has three. So here's our triangle. I'm going to use my selection tool to move it around. And you'll notice that it doesn't really have anything in it. That's because our fill here is set to null. So we can choose a fill color of white, or we can go and select a color. Let's call this the Green Pyramid Company. So I'm going to now use my direct select tool to select the vertices. Each of these anchors here can be moved if you click once to select it and then drag it where you want it to go. So this one I will move up here and this one will be down here. Now that I've got it matching up I can look at my layers again. F7 will bring those up and I can drag that layer underneath the others and then zoom in and take a look. Now I could easily draw another one or since I'm selecting it now, you can see the red selection there, Control C, Control V gives me an entire second triangle which I can now move into position and click and choose the vertices that I want to move and get that. So that doesn't look too bad it would be nice if we had a gradient on there to make it look even better. So I'm going to select this face right here, and instead of just a solid green, I'm going to make it a gradient. Our gradient options co come up over here, and I'm going to choose two different shades of green, and then change the angle so that it goes at a different angle. So I can choose a 90 degree angle. You can go the opposite direction if you want, so it's a little darker at the bottom and lighter at the top. Do the same for the other one. The light is usually hitting from one side or another, but if I choose that gradient, I can then darken these up a little bit if I want to. Maybe choose a slightly darker green. Or a whole nother green. Get creative here. Kind of like that. If I choose this other one, I think I'll go with that blue as well. Okay, so there is a pyramid with two different layers that I can turn on and off. And that allows me to easily select all of the lines on one layer and increase their stroke size to whatever I would like it to be. So I can click away, and now I have a much heavier set of lines. Oh, too heavy, bring it back down a notch. So a lot of flexibility after the fact. So that's fills and strokes, and adding layers of different triangles or other polygons to your drawing.